Beat the quarters. Run out the gun. Stand by this tower battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lin stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. West Indiaman we saw go in this morning. Well, there's a lighter beside her. Of course, they wouldn't unload her at the quay. They'd put her cargo into lighters and send them upriver to Rouen and Paris. And at the moment, I'm more interested in the town's defences on the shipping. There are the ports of Address and Tournville on that steep cliff. The twin lighthouses on, on Cap de La Haye. The batteries there on that low ground beside the jetty. The batteries are going to be our greatest danger. I don't expect the forts to find out what's going on in time to open fire. I don't see why anyone should find out, sir. The ship's disguised, and we've got plain pea jackets over our uniforms. Mm. Oh, look, sir, look. There's a lot of shipping further in. Mm. Oh, might even be ships of the line. They haven't got their yards crossed. Well, I've never been in as close as this before. It'll be dark soon. I hope the weather doesn't clear anymore. It's just light enough to find our way in, and it'll be dark enough to cover us as we come out. Uh, sail on the lee, sir. Oh, that's the pilot lugger coming out to us. Oh. They think we're the flame, sure enough. Very good. Well, set the men to cheering at the port side. Secure the pilot when he comes on board. I'll calm the ship in. Aye, aye, sir. Now then, you men. You're a gang of mutineers sailing your ship to the enemy as a prize. Now, come on, let's hear from you. Shout! Sing! Dance! <laughs> Back the main topsail! Here's the lugger, sir. And here's the pilot coming aboard. Lee braces. Over with the wheel and on into the harbor. <laughs> Mr. Freeman, have you taken care of the pilot? <laughs> I have that, sir. I put my shoulder into his back and shot him down the hatchway. We were nearing the big Indiaman now. She lay with loose sails, swinging to a single anchor. In the fading light, I could just make out a dozen of her crew at her side, staring curiously at us. You may hoist out the boats. Aye, aye, sir. Shall I send the men into them? Well, only the picked men as arranged. Remember, they are to take the Indiaman without firing a shot. Once we alarm the shore, we're lost. Oh, they understand, sir. They've been well drilled. Good. Boats away!
it's coming back, sir. Well, the men they've put aboard must have done their job. Excellent. Look, look, here comes the Indiaman, too. <laughs> Steady as you go. Mr. Freeman, my hand up the lead, if you please. I'm afraid we shall gain no more time. The shore authorities will be fully alert in a moment. Yes, the cutter's signaling the shore for the lantern. Yes, and firing a musket to attract their attention. Stand by to go about. This is going to be the most ticklish moment of our outward passage. Steady as she goes. Steady it is, sir. I must have cleared and loaded a bow chaser. Six pounder from the sound of it. Ah, yes, there's the flame of it. But she can't see us very clearly. I can see the Indian, though. She's coming round very neatly. That master mate of yours is a good man. Ah, this will be a different matter. The 32 pounders on the jetty are in action now. We shall be right in their range as we round the jetty. Shall I reply to their father? No. Our six pounders will make no impression on that solid battery, and the flashes will reveal our position. Well, why aren't they firing again? Well, they've had time for several salvos. I imagine Bonaparte has stripped his shore defenses of seasoned gunners for his army in Germany. These gunners are probably untrained recruits, and working in the dark is making them unhandier than ever. Look out, sir! Special dead ahead! Wheel there. Stay steady. Make no effort to avoid it. It's the pilot, Lucker. We can see its main book. They're trying to block our escape. She's coming straight for us, sir! Then let the weakest go to the wall. Stand fast, everybody. Look at her! Look at her! Her bows are smashed like an eggshell! The water's pouring into her! Hmm, that was closer. They fired at the noise. Getting into deeper water. Lay her on the other tack, if you please, Mr. Freeman. I tried hard to keep any trace of doubt or excitement from my voice. But I knew that success or failure depended on the chances of the next few minutes. I felt weak with apprehension. Not merely for the physical danger that we were in, but for the danger to my reputation should I fail. Men would not stop to think of my real motive. They would say I'd tried to take advantage of the mutiny to feather my own nest by capturing a prize. My honor, as well as my life and liberty, were at stake. Steady as she goes. We're out of range of the batteries now. <laughs> what a shock for them, sir. A loaded Indiaman taken out of harbor right under their very noses. Very good piece of work, Mr. Freeman. All hands did their duty admirably. <laughs> Flog any man who is disrespectful to the Commodore. Well, leave them alone, Mr. Freeman. They mean well and they're excited. It sounds as though our prize crew on the Indiaman share their feelings. <laughs> yeah, and they've reason to. All hands will get a nice share of prize money. And there ought to be at least a thousand pounds in it for you, sir. Yes, I shall go below, Mr. Freeman. <clears throat> well, that will do, man. Mr. Freeman, please be good enough to wish you grog to all hands. <laughs> patches of mist and the wind backing south by west. As I came on deck from my bath under the pump, I noted that we were hoped too with the captured Indiaman astern. I knew that I should send her back to England at once, but I could not do that without writing a report. There was the mutinous flame to deal with before I could think about reports. Yes, there she is, sir. Just coming out of that mist bank. Well, there's only one thing to do. We'll have to fetch her out. Clear the ship for action. Aye, aye, sir. The news must have got around on shore now that the brig with the patched sail is playing a double game, and they'll be watching for another move. If we delay, the mutineers might get in touch with the shore again and explain. Yes, or if they see from the shore there's two brigs with patched sails, they may guess what's been done. Yes, quite so. Well, see that the men have some breakfast first, and it will be best if the guns will not run out yet. Aye, very good, sir.
sending out the guns would warn the flame that we expected to fight. And that might tell them that escape to the French was not so easy as they thought. I gulped a little as I realized that within an hour the deck I trod would be swept with the carronades of the flame. Within that hour, I might be dead or shrieking under the surgeon's knife. Deck, sir! Interesting, Mr. Freeman. The mutineers are heading in rather than fight. They think those craft are coming out to welcome them. <laughs> They're in for a shock, the Ah, right. hey, Hello. Well, they're not so sure. They're hesitating. Look, you can see them spilling the wind from their mainsail. Probably an argument going on aboard between those who only want to keep out of our range and those who want to go over to the French. Well, that argument will be soon resolved. Those craft are gunboats, and that lugger's full of men. Ah, that's the flame. A warning shot to make the frogs keep their distance. Look, sir, look. Look, the frames realize the craft are hostile. She's wearing round. Mm, too late. They're closing in on her and opening fire. Look, sir, look. Look, the men from the lugger are boarding the flame. Look, they'll take her. We'll run the guns out quickly. At least we shall fight against Frenchmen and not Englishmen. Gunners, listen to me. They're going in among those gunboats and they must be sunk. Aim true at the base of their masts and don't fire until you're sure you can hit. We were among the gunboats then. Our carronades went off on both sides. On our starboard side, I had one gunboat under my eye, half a dozen men by her tiller, two men at each sweep amidship, a dozen at the big gun forward. Our shots came smashing in. We fired at extreme depression. They smashed straight through the frail shell of the boat. The sides caved in. The sea surged over her. The big gun slewed and completed the wreck. And only a few bobbing heads in the water showed where she had been. The same on the port side. Whoever was responsible for exposing those small boats to our fire was a fool. But now the lugger and the flame were close ahead. Mr. Freeman, load with canister, if you please. We'll run alongside the French lugger. One broadside, and then we'll board her in the smoke. Aye, aye, sir. Governors! Canister! I shall want every available man in the boarding party. You, Mr. Freeman, will stay here. Oh, but, sir... Now, you'll stay here. Pick six good seamen to stay with you and work the brig out if we don't come back. Is that clear, Mr. Freeman? Yes, sir, is you. Helmsman, lay us alongside that lugger. Oh. Gunners, you'll see that every shot tells. Boarders, you ready to come with me? Aye, aye, aye. brandishing a cutlass had leaped past me on the lugger. It was Brown. I saw him striking left and right, and then I was beside him in the struggling, slashing mass. I stumbled over a pile of dead and wounded men who had been caught in the blast of shot from our brig, and that stumble saved my life, for a blade snicked past my head as I pitched. An upward thrust as I recovered disposed of my attacker, and I fired the pistol in my left hand at a blue uniform figure which loomed through the smoke at me. But now the wind blew the smoke clear, fighting around me every way, and I could see again. Our master's mate was running down the tricolor from the masthead. On the starboard side was the flame. I could see French infantry shakers over her bulwarks. A second wave of boarders came pouring in from the Porta Trelli. Some went over, sir. The ship's ours, sir. Oh, 
Oh. Where are the other mutineers? Uh, down below, I fancy, sir. Now, some of the Frenchies are down there, too, sir. Cowards. Sir. I'd rather die on deck than scuttle into a hole like a rat. We'll have them out of it. Moment, we must do Boats. I'd forgotten them in the heat of the battle. But now I saw the two of them anchored a couple of cables lengths away in shoal water. The flame, the lugger, and the porter chaley, all locked together, made a huge target. Another shot crashed into us, and then another. The 24 pound balls were smashing through the whole frail length of the brig, tearing their way through the cowering mutineers and French below decks. Haste was essential if we were not to be sunk where we lay. Down, down, get those hatches battened down. Put a sentry over each. Mr. Gibbons, sir. Secure your hatches. Get ready to make sail. All right, sir. What topmen are there? Man the halyards, put a man on the wheel. Very well, Mr. Freeman. Cast off and make sail. Rendezvous at the Indiaman. All right, sir. They're lively now. Hoist away at that sail. Wheel there, hard to starboard. There goes to Port the Chaley, sir. Yeah. And the prize crew's working the lugger away. We'll all be out of range of the gunboats in a minute. Oh, thank heaven the wind is offshore. Hello. What's all that going on overside? Tell me, sir. It's the prisoners. Mutineers and froggies. They're scrambling out through the shadows and jumping overside. Now let them go. Half will be drowned, and the mutineers who were saved will get no mercy from the French after this. Wait a minute. Where's the ringleader? Where's um, Nathaniel Sweet? He must not escape. He must be brought to trial or killed. He was below, sir. Look, ain't that his own? Over there. Where? Swimming. Yeah, there. You can see his long white hair. Nathaniel Sweet! I call upon you to surrender and stand your trial. I just laugh in the swine. Hey, you, sir. You on sentry at the hatch. Pick me off that white-haired swimmer with your musket. Aye, aye, sir. Ah, look at the splash. Not within ten yards. Now give me the musket. Reload quick or the villain will escape. I'll have him if I have to jump over and swim to him. Here's another musket, sir. Thank you. Love me. I wish I was a good shot myself. I'll give it to me. Got him, sir. Got him. He won't need no more mutineers. Where? Where is he? Porter. No. Oh, uh, oh, there he is. Look. Just see his hair trailing. There. Ah, now he's gone. Yeah. It's a horrible thing to have to do. There was no one You will bear witness, Brian, that I called on him to surrender. Bless you, sir. It's a waste of breath. He's better off, too. He'd only hang if he was took. It was true. That white hair trailing like a horrible weed on the sea was to haunt my dreams for long to come. The mutiny was suppressed, the flame retaken, the French defeated, and valuable prizes secured. Barbara and Richard and Smallbridge seemed close again. Yet there was no joy in my heart as we sailed to rendezvous. Only a, a nightmare vision of long white hair trailing on red tinted water. <laughs> Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.